In today's reading of Unwind Your Mind Back to God, written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh, we continue with Book 1, Laying the Foundation. This is Chapter 3, Section 3. A New Interpretation, Part 3. Form, Content, and responsibility for sight. David The course says you may be surprised at how different the goals that this course is advocating are from the goals that you hold in your mind. This is a course that is turning us around and having us go within to try to hold a constant purpose in mind to stabilize our perception. And what often happens when people start working with the Course is a sense that the Course will ask me to give up something that is valuable, something that I like and I enjoy. This is the belief in sacrifice. Sacrifice is a very, very deeply rooted idea in the mind. In a metaphysical sense, the mind has turned away from the light and identified with the self-concept in all its forms. It is basically afraid of the light. When going toward the light, it now believes it has to give up things of real value, things that it is very familiar with, things that it is very attracted to, the status quo. There are certain things about the status quo that the mind likes and it is seen as, uh-oh, I do not want to rock the boat. I do not want to change the status quo. The mind defends against the Holy Spirit by its ordering of all the thoughts. Even though these thoughts are images, it is in the ordering of them where the judgment comes in. One of the common ways to judge is to condemn your brother. It is in the ordering of images and the hierarchy of illusions that judgment takes on a finer point and you start getting into subtleties of preference. Those subtleties are so important to see because from those orderings, those self-concepts, goals come forth and that is where expectations come in. Even if it is something as simple as driving along and seeing an open parking space, you are trying to get there and someone comes along and gets in there and you feel a little sense of frustration that someone beat you to the parking space. There was an expectation. That is mine. I pictured myself in that parking space. Or whatever. It is very subtle. Friend, it occurred to me that the problem is interpretation. Something happens and we interpret it. It became clear to me that it is an expectation that somehow it is my parking space and someone intentionally took it away from me and I feel victimized. David, yes. 
Why would it be offensive unless we could trace it back to something that was offending me? There is that me again. Another question is, who is the me? Friend, I would be more concerned about the dynamics around the reverse of that. I see a parking space and I am oblivious to the fact that another person is aiming for that space. And I get the space and there is this driver behind me who is red in the face and just about to explode. Now, Do I feel any responsibility because I was insensitive to his sense of ownership? David, yes. Once we break it down and look at the parts, it can get away real quick. We have to get back to the idea of purpose. Under the Holy Spirit's teaching, there are not any losers. Everyone gains. In fact, the whole sonship gains from every decision we make with the Holy Spirit. Underneath what you are saying is, can anybody else be a cause of my upset? Or is there responsibility involved for other people's feelings? in any way or to any degree. That is a very core issue. Taking complete responsibility for your own state of mind. The sole responsibility of the teacher of God is to accept the atonement for himself. Or as I like to say, it is always my lesson. If I am really at peace, if I really am in a defenseless place, I will automatically perceive this as a call for love and the response then is completely involuntary. Whether it be a smile or a kind word or something else, we are not responsible for choosing our behavior we are responsible for lining up with the Holy Spirit. As soon as we do that, whatever comes through will be most helpful for the whole sonship. It is crucial to see the guilt that comes from the belief that I can upset someone else or that someone else can upset me. It is key to see that believing that the screen is causative, thinking that actual harm can be done from something on the screen or that something did not go the way I wanted, brings me back down to helplessness and powerlessness. Friend, I hear you are saying that it is not about being clever enough to respond in the right way, which is the way psychology would approach it. It is simply to be clear in your own center and then trust the automatic response. Because of your own clarity, you can trust your response. I still have to own the fact that I am not always in what I would call perfect peace. It is sort of relative peace and there is always something in my cage that can rattle under some circumstances. But I recognize that it is my cage that is rattling and I am responsible for that part of it. I guess the question I'm asking is that I certainly felt relatively at peace, but it did not have the appearance of a peaceful situation, and that is why I am raising the question. 
if one were truly at peace with the situations that surround us, can one be truly at peace and have a bomb drop? David What we are getting to is that it is not situational. Peace is not tied into appearances in any way. Jesus is a good example of accepting the atonement and choosing to see the world differently. And yet, what seems to be happening on the screen seems to go on, including even an angry mob of thousands in one accord yelling, Crucify him! Which you may not consider peaceful. He did not share their perception. He did not perceive it as an attack because he was holding on to the torch of peace regardless of what was happening on the screen. That is a good extreme example of it is just my choice. I have to be very clear though and when we get back to that responsibility we get back to clarity. The Holy Spirit has only two orders of thought. He perceives everything as love or a call for love. The Course says you are too bound to form to perceive consistently like the Holy Spirit. You are too bound to form and not to content when you have definitions of who people are and what certain behaviors mean. Whenever we start to interpret behaviors we get away from, what is my purpose? What am I to be holding on to? That is where the reaction comes in. Friend, it seems I am more concerned with form than content. David, from a deeper perspective, the mind denied all these attack thoughts and tried to push them out of awareness. Then, another way the ego counsels is that the way to get rid of attack thoughts is to project them out onto the screen. If you consider what we would call a frightening situation, the form has become a concrete form of fear. There is something in my mind that I cannot accept and look at and take responsibility for. It really is just a thought that I have or I made up and I do not want to look at that so I keep it buried in the unconscious and then I project it out and therefore I see something objectionable in someone else or some other situation or thing. That is the deeper dynamic that is going on beneath what we are talking about. Friend, then I guess I go back to the earlier part of the question which was, did I attract this to myself? I can accept that all things are lessons that he would have us learn, but I have been dealing with asking what the lesson is. There is this sense that nothing comes into our lives that we have not asked for at some, le at some level. Did Jesus ask to be crucified? I think I hear you say on one level, no, and on another level, yes. David. It was the power of a teaching demonstration. There is a line in the Course that says that everything I seem to ask for, I receive as I have asked. Let's look at the metaphysical idea of responsibility. 
we are only responsible for accepting the atonement. The only thing we are responsible for is choosing to be in our right mind, for choosing the Holy Spirit. When the idea of responsibility is taken into the level of form, then you get into guilt. Take ideas like the law of attraction and then cancer. Now, you can see we are going to confuse the levels and you can see immediately how the guilt comes in. I attracted this cancer to me. Whack, whack, whack. I'm doing the course wrong. I should do better. I should be able to heal myself. This is a misunderstanding of the statement, I am responsible. Here is the truth. I am responsible for choosing the right mind. But once I raise the body thoughts up, the cancer to the level of mind, I have hooked the idea of self-responsibility in with that form which I am judging, that terrible, awful thing, and then guilt automatically results. This is bringing the mind to see that the only way that correction can take place is by changing the thoughts. There is no amount of changing behavior that will help, no matter how many versions of if only you can come up with. If only I had done this differently. If only I had a mammogram or eaten a lot of beta carotene. But we say, wait a minute, I'm not going to look at the behavior level. I have a choice and I want to perceive this situation differently. I want to link with a different thought system in my mind, a thought level that can give me a different way of perceiving this. I want to choose right-mindedness. I want to choose the way out. Friend, a thought occurred to me when I was taking a Science of Mind course last year. It addressed the importance of clarifying exactly what you are treating for. I heard that if I am trying to train in patience, for example, then I am probably going to get a lot of things coming into my life that are going to teach me patience. If I can get on past that to the acceptance level to accept that patience is my divine right and patience is mine now, then I may get through or past some of these lessons. And my thought was that I was not sure I was thinking enough that I need more patience. True enough, I get opportunities around patience and that would be a step short of acceptance of the fact that patience is indeed mine. David we can talk about the law of karma. This one basic law has taken many different words and forms. Giving and receiving are the same. Or, as ye sow, so shall ye reap. If the mind gets exactly what it wants always, as ye sow, so shall ye reap, then the question is, does the deceived mind know what it wants? The definition of a deceived or split mind is a mind that has two thought systems. It has the ego and the Holy Spirit's thought systems. Does it know what it wants? 
I want the Holy Spirit. I want the ego. I want the Holy Spirit. No, I want the ego. If the mind is confused, if it is split, it does not know what it wants. But it gets exactly what it wants. So it gets confusion. You see? You see how this works? That is why it is so important to learn to choose the Holy Spirit's thought system. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. If there is not a pure intention, if one does not have a mind with pure thought, the thoughts that only come from God, then one is going to keep calling forth witnesses in the world that will attest to confusion and conflict. That is why it is so important to get really clear about these two thought systems and to let the ego egos go. Otherwise, you are just going to continually call forth witnesses of littleness and frailty and that you are able to be harmed by the slightest thing going wrong. That is the ego's thought system, and as long as one holds on to that thought system, that is what is going to happen. Friend, so another way to look at having a confused thought would be to say that I am experiencing confusion when I want to experience peace. And so this is an invitation to peace. I want to choose peace. Is it a... It is a reminder of that? David. We went into denial last night about backward thoughts and forward thoughts. Backward thoughts were we defined as cause and effect being split off and turned around. There is something on the screen. There is something in the world that has the power to give peace or to take away peace. You see how both extremes get back to that codependency. If there is something in the world that can give me peace, then I am dependent on it and I am going to try to pursue it. If there is a certain person, a certain place, a certain career, if there is a certain physical way of looking, whatever it is you believe can bring you happiness and peace, you will be codependent on. Conversely, if there are crime areas, if there are areas with bad weather, areas where the economy is terrible, that are identified as things that can take away your peace, then you are codependent there too. Because you are going to have to find the areas that do not have crime, or better economies, or ones with better weather. You can see how you can be on an endless chase to try to pacify the ego in order to try to get peace of mind. If you really pull it away from there, being anything external that can give you peace, then it comes back to, what is it in my mind that can give me peace and happiness? Your function and your happiness are one. As long as I am holding on to my function, happiness will be in my awareness. Friend, then the reverse could be true. There is nothing that can take my peace away. And so that comment you made about, did I call it to me or did I create it? Well, yes, by my interpretation of it, By how I chose to look at it, I certainly did. David, it is the interpretation that upsets us. 
The question of whether you called it to yourself implies that the mind still perceives itself in a linear world with linear events that happen to it. The script is written. It has played out. We have talked about the feelings of resistance to the script being written. That you may think it sounds like predetermination or destiny. Yuck! Where is my choice? Where is my free will? The script is written, but you do have a choice. You have the choice of how you look upon the script. Which lens are you going to look through? Which guide are you going to listen to? That brings us back to content or purpose. The ego has the purpose of death. It wants to call forth witnesses to prove that sickness and pain and death and destruction are who you are. That you are teeny and you are little. The Holy Spirit has given the purpose of healing to the world. It is a completely different purpose. But it takes a lot of practice and mind training to hold that completely different purpose of healing in mind. The mind that is deceived believes that this world is real. It believes that it is a real person and that there are real events that are happening to it. I really lost my job. I really do not have enough money to pay the rent. That is how it feels. It really does not see it as a dream. When we go to bed at night and dream, do we react to the dreams? There is running and sometimes fear and lots of emotions that seem to go on in those dreams. Why? Because the mind thinks it is in the dream. If you really let go of judgment, you will start to see more and more that you are the dreamer of the dream. You are the cause of the dream. If I am in the dream, it does not seem like I am the cause of the dream and I am not in control of it. But if I step back and realize that I am the dreamer of the dream, then I can accept another purpose for it. Okay, I'm going to change the purpose. Out with the ego and in with the Holy Spirit. The Course calls that the happy dream. There is nothing on the screen that has changed. There are still the same things going on. What the world describes as wars and so on. But my purpose for the world has changed. Friend, is that the same script? I mean, we're not changing the script? David, right. Friend, it is just a way of looking at things. Everything else is the same? David, yes. That seems to be a very high concept. Because, wait a minute, it seems like I am a person. I can choose to raise my arm or lower it. That is changing the script. And it is that sort of thing that makes it difficult to pull back. Because the mind believes that bodies are autonomous and behavior is autonomous. 
I can decide to go from Seattle to Coney Island to Cincinnati or not. No. The script is written. The script is just playing itself out, and behavior is not autonomous. What you do comes from what you think. You have a choice in what you think. And that is the only choice you have. The behavior follows automatically from the thought system you choose to think with. Friend, this is my pet topic. You said that I can make a choice to interpret what happens and that if I am choosing to listen to the Holy Spirit... I can choose to act in the direction with the Holy Spirit. But I am still choosing, right? Or, if I want to be right, I can choose to act with the ego and perhaps thumb my nose at this guy. I can be right and I can be obnoxious and I am still making a choice. I would love to walk out of here clear about these things. David, you may believe that you are responsible for what you do, but not for what you think. The truth is that you are responsible for what you think, for only at that level is real choice possible. Text Chapter 2, Section 6 it sure seems convincing in this world that we are individual, unique little persons that have free choice. And not only that, there are other individual unique persons on the planet that can also choose, and when they make a choice, does it reflect my choice? No. But the mind has denied that this is like an optical illusion, that this is a screen that it has projected out there. This is all about the subject-object split. There are all these objects, like a jigsaw puzzle with hundreds of little pieces. I pick one out and say, this is me. Out of the whole puzzle, I pick one little piece. Now there is a me apart from all the other pieces. There is fragmentation because now I have this piece as me and this other piece I am going to move over here because I do not like that one. These are the ones I like. I will surround myself with these. You can see there is still a sense of otherness. There is me and there are the others. That is what the optical illusion of this world is. It is that split that you believe is there between you and your brother. That is what the fragments are. Bodies. I am a person, which includes a body, and this is another person. And once I perceive that split, there, then it seems that I am constantly battling against all these other fragments, and I need my space, I need autonomy. I do not want to become too codependent. That whole tug of war comes into play. Friend, if I recognize my oneness with the sonship, then that is where I get confused. That is when I feel like I should back my car out and give them my place because he or she is more upset than I am about having it or not having it. 
Then I get irritated, and that is crazy. I know that that is still dealing with form, and I know that I am responsible for the peace within myself. But there is a peace missing. Friend, That is choice in behavior. Choosing the thought would determine the behavior. I can choose thoughts which are peaceful and my behavior can stem from that. That is what I want. I either line up with the Holy Spirit or with the ego. Choosing between illusions is not a real choice.